Jasper would also show that Directors Durante, Frega, Fuentes, Hobson, Melvin, Ross, and Chairman Diller are also present. Thank you. Item number two is approval of the minutes from the meeting held on December 17, 2015. Any questions or comments? Motion by Director DeWitt, second by Director Buchanan. Roll call. Director Buchanan? Aye. Director Colson? Aye. Director DeWitt? Yes. Director Lewis? Aye. Director Troiani? Here. Director McGallis? Here. Six ayes and one absent. Thank you. Item number th uh, three is a report on the monthly financial results for November 2015. B? So this month will be uh, a short month. All we have is uh, the financial dashboard. So we'll be reviewing the year-to-day financial results through November 2015. In general, uh, favorable public funding and expense uh, results continue to more than offset unfavorable operating revenue uh, with only one month remaining in 2015. Uh, the size of the Chicago area labor force increased by 2,400 in November, but employment decreased by about 4,800 jobs. This resulted in an increase in the regional unemployment rate to 5.4%, uh, while the national unemployment rate held steady at 5%. So let's look at ridership. Year-to-date ridership is 1.5% lower than budget. Uh, however, the November system ridership was higher than prior year for the first time since August. Um, as shown on this chart um, by the orange versus the blue bars. For the year, RTA system ridership is now down 0.1% versus 2014, uh, but it is an improvement of 0.2 percentage points from last month, so, so a bit better. Uh, returning to the ridership summary, all three service boards as well as ADA paratransit continue to see ridership results below budget, budgeted levels. As indicated by the red box, Pace Suburban service ridership is 7.7% unfavorable to budget and 4.9% lower than 2014. Pace cites the lower gas prices, the dis uh, discontinuation of the cash transfers, and then just national uh, trends on lower bus ridership um, as, as the reasons for the decline. Uh, before we discuss operating revenue, I'd like to recap the situation with the state reduced fare reimbursement. We want to keep you informed. Uh, nothing really new to report here, but how it's affecting um, 2015 and 2016 results. As you're aware, the funding partially offsets the cost of free and reduced fare rights to the service boards, and in the past it has totaled $34 million per year. Uh, the state fiscal year 2015, they reduced the funding to $17.5 million. So that's all they budgeted, and we did receive that um, last summer. Um, we were waiting to see if they would add an additional 17.5 like they did the prior year. That has not happened, so the service boards are not counting on that revenue at this point. They're not budgeting for it. That is why um, the recovery ratios um, are, are being impacted. Um, we don't know, of course, what will happen in 2016. Again, we are hoping for um, the full $34 million. We could also get the additional you know, 2015 monies, but we really don't know. So they'll continue to report that as a shortfall uh, to their budget, which, you know, which impacts the recovery ratios. Um, and we'll see as we continue to, you know, look at the status of the 2016 budget. Um, so now let's look at operating revenue. It was 16.1 million or 1.5 unfavorable to budget, primarily due to this, again, lower level of state reduced fare reimbursement being reported. Pace Suburban Service, Operating revenue was 7.1% unfavorable, highlighted in red, again due to the shortfall in RFR, uh, compounded by lower than budgeted advertising revenue results. Uh, now let's look at public funding. So it shows favorable results to budget for each service board. We are including here actual sales tax results through September, which have grown 4.6 over prior year. And a projection for October indicates 3.3 growth over October 2014. For CTA 2015 uh, real estate transfer tax, or the RET results have exceeded budget by 11.1 million. So it's contributing uh, to a highlighted favorable public funding variance of 5.1. Um, you should also know that the one tax that was um, not being uh, remitted by the state was the use tax. Uh, but we were just recently notified and um, either have received or will receive shortly the 12.1 million that, uh, or 12 
plus million uh, that had been withheld. And it is being looked at as a continuing appropriation, so that money will be coming through. So that's, that's very good news. So um, again, our sales tax is coming forward um, as expected. The PTF is about you know four to five months delay, nothing unusual. And then the use tax is actually now being, being paid. So that's, that's good news. Um, so let's look at operating expenses. System-wide operating expenses through October were 52.2 million or 2.2% favorable to budget, with each service board reporting favorable results for both the month of November and year to date. Um, as, we re as we previously reported, about 40% of this favorable variance is attributable to lower fuel prices. Uh, pay suburban service had a 6.8% favorable to budget expense performance highlighted in, in blue, and that's primarily uh, due to fuel savings of $8 million. Um, ADA paratransit is 9.2 favorable expense performance, is driven by lower purchase transportation, fuel, administrative, and overhead expense. So PACE continues to realize lower ADA paratransit trip costs due to their improved terms in their uh, provider contracts for transportation. So now at the regional level, operating expenses and public funding more than offset the unfavorable operating revenue, producing a year-to-date net result, which was $83 million favorable to budget, a $15.8 million improvement from last month's report. Pace Suburban Service and ADA Paratransit both have favorable net results of variances in excess of 3%, highlighted in blue again due to good expense performance. Uh, CTA Metro Recovery Ratios, shown on the expanded recovery ratio slide, improved relative to last month's report. PACE's recovery ratio dipped 0.1% compared to last month. And then look at the, on the left, the fare recovery ratio of 38.4% includes passenger fare revenue only, unchanged from last month's report. So it's considered like the pure uh, recovery ratio. Uh, when we add ancillary service board revenue, the recovery ratio increases to 44% through November, and it's labeled as all revenue in the table. In the right section, we show the statutory recovery ratio, which is with the credits that are allowed compared to budget. So that's at 52.3% through November, 0.2% percentage points unfavorable to budget. And again, this is due primarily to the reduced um, state-reduced uh, fair reimbursements. Um, so with one, one month remaining in the fiscal year, the system is still on track to finish 2015 strong with strong operating results re re uh, relative to budget despite the ridership fall and expense containment. That concludes uh, my remarks. Thank you, Lee. Are there any questions or comments? Director Gillette. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Jeremy, I might be putting you on the spot here, or, or Leanne. Um, We've talked uh, over the past few months about trying to find a legislative solution to this whole free discounted fare situation. And I don't know if you've made any progress, but if you have, I'd be interested to hear it. If you haven't, I'd be interested in hearing a little bit about what's the outline to approach this issue. Uh, certainly this is a significant amount of money that would take a significant burden off of all of the service boards, not just uh, the RTA as a whole. So I don't have a sort of a yes, no, straightforward answer just yet. Um, it is a topic I'm sitting down uh, with the executive directors uh, next week, early next week, uh, which I do every other month. And that is one of the key agenda items because it very much influences our, we're setting our legislative agenda for this you know, current Springfield session. Um, it, it is a topic that we want to advance uh, potentially legislatively. Um, we also are taking sort of a two-pronged approach. So we've got the legislative side of things, which is one way to uh, approach this. But then we're also uh, taking sort of an administrative side uh, approach on this and working with the City of Chicago uh, and the State's Department of Aging on ways we can maybe streamline and improve. Uh, there are some other pieces uh, to the administrative side of things that are um, in the works, which um, I probably wouldn't want to elaborate too much now, but we would be happy to get you a little bit more detail on that as we advance. So keep you in the loop, but it is certainly, um, be assured that it is on our agenda of something we would like to try to either um, imp improve the situation um, in, in some way. And just to follow up, I, I'm, I'm not looking to denigrate the senior citizen population of our community or the region per se, but um, I think there are some serious opportunities that we should be 
uh, aggressively pursuing to try to find a solution to reduce some of this burden that's put on all of us. What, what's the number? What's the number that we're all dealing with in free and discounted fares? Five hundred and sixty thousand total in free and um, reduced. Um, re uh, free is one hundred and eighty thousand people. People dollars. Keep, keep in mind that um, while we receive thirty-four million, um, the cost of the program, the number, depending yeah. on what you look at, has been estimated as high as a hundred million, and you know certainly there's more seventy, eighty million range, depending on what types of fares you're including, which ones are mandated, which ones additional fares may be offered by a service board that aren't mandated. So. Um, it you know varies, but it, the 34 million and in, in, in 2015 the 17 certainly doesn't begin to cover the cost of providing this program. And just to confirm, I mean all we're talking about is the free ride piece. The uh, federally required reduced fare programs would stay intact, and so some of that reimbursement can help support some of that. But it's the the free ride kind of <coughs> piece is the the issue that we're talking about. Yeah, it's significant dollars that I think uh, yes. deserve some more attention. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Director Farragut. Uh, speaking as a senior, I can well afford whatever it costs to ride the various uh, means of transportation. Um, and I like paying my way. Um, I, uh, I think that uh, those of us that can afford it certainly should go off the, the dole. Thank you. <laughs> Other, yes, uh, Director Buchanan. Yeah, maybe I'll put uh, you on the spot again, Diane. Uh, again, I, I thought I heard on the news that the CTA was getting new buses uh, that would replace about 60 or 70 percent of the uh, aged buses that are driving around now. And as long as I've been on this board, there's always been a question of dollars. And my question is, where did those dollars just pop up in the universe here? And uh, uh, I mean, it's got to be a significant amount of money to purchase that many buses. Uh, Thank you. Issues. So, I mean, as the board knows, we have an annual capital program that we approve. Um, those dollars were that those items were part of the scheduled um, and programmed annual capital pro, um, program that service boards have. Uh, there are federal dollars that, yeah, money is still tight, but there are monies that still flow. I think what this current year's budget for capital was 3.9. Right. So, so there's a five-year capital program yep. that, and then every year you approve a two-year business plan, you know, and then of course the operating budget. So we'd have to look at the exact source of those monies, but they could be federal monies, they could be state monies, they could be bond monies, bond series monies, either RTA bonds or CTA bonds. So we'd have to look at the source. And remember, whenever there's a change to the capital program, they must submit it through the RTA, and um, it comes to the board for approval, unless it's their own funds. But either way, we are... Um, you know, we are kept informed and we update their program. So these monies could have been programmed four years ago, you know, but um, we'd have to look at the exact source of this particular funding. So are those federal dollars? I, I don't know here right now. We'd have to look at the source, and we could get back to most, you with that. But most likely. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yes, Director Lewis. Uh, <clears throat> B, uh, we've talked about fuel prices before, the percentage that it plays in most of the transit agencies, and I know these are November numbers, but given the unprecedented drop in oil prices, is there anything we can anticipate as we go forward relative to what the impact might be on ridership and also some of the expenses that could be um, impacted by this fuel situation or, the, or this um, energy situation? I know we're, we're not even at December numbers, but just um, on a preemptive basis, is there anything we should be thinking about? We did uh, an elasticity study, and I'm trying to think of who we sent it to. Was it you, Director Hobson? We can share that with you. And all we were basing, I mean, we were looking at the impact of fuel prices and um, historically how that's affected our ridership. Um, I think those trends could probably hold today, you know. But, I mean, there's there's other factors. Let, let us share that with you. Um, I, I just think that it's, it's you know, we're going to have to continue to watch it. We're obviously concerned about you know, bus ridership, um, but I don't know how much they can plan. The, you know, when they have um, their contracted services, certainly those costs 
redu are reduced as it relates to uh, service uh, providing of service. Uh, we'll continue to watch it. Um, they're certainly benefiting from those fuel savings as well. Uh, but we'll share that elasticity study and see where, you know, see how, how, if that answers some of your questions. That would be helpful. I think the, the thing that I was thinking was that a lot of people will have a propensity to not take public transportation if fuel costs get down to, a, you know, a dollar something a gallon. So that was uh, what was kind of driving it. You have the two forces. <laughs> it benefits from an expense perspective, but it impacts ridership positively. Yes. Yes, it will. So we'll share that with you. And okay. Other questions or comments? not uh, thank you very much that does not recall uh, require an action uh, any other items that come before the committee no we have a motion to adjourn motion by member DeWitt second by director Buchanan all in favor signify by saying aye nays aye. ayes have it thank you committee is adjourned